Shamila Batohi, the head of the National Prosecuting Authority, or NPA, says fighting corruption is a priority for the NPA, but it needs a huge investment and a commitment from government. Presenting its annual report to Parliament's Justice Committee yesterday, Batohi said budget cuts will undo the gains already made and will undermine the work done in rebuilding the NPA. The organization is facing an enormous task of speeding up the backlog in prosecutions while also restoring the public's faith in the criminal justice system. Well, to talk to us about this, uh, we've got Advocate Paul Hoffman. He's the Director of Accountability. And Lawson Naidu, he's the Executive Secretary of the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution, or CASIC. Gentlemen, great to have you. Welcome to the show. Good morning, yeah. All right, let me, let me begin with you, um, Advocate. We'll start with you, Advocate Hoffman. It's, be, it's been a year since NDPP Shamila Batohi and investigating Directorate Head Hermione Cronier took over. What's your view on the NPA's performance over the past year under this new leadership? Well, I think we have to concede that the uh, intervention of the pandemic has upset the, uh, the progress, but... What, what concerns me, as it should concern everybody, is that the, the budget cuts are going to have a severe impact of a negative kind on the ability of NPA to do its work. And what concerns me most about the reporting that occurred in Parliament yesterday is that the decision that was made by the National Executive Committee of the ANC at the beginning of August this year, a decision which brings the ANC onto the same page as the Constitutional mm. Court and the law, mm. in which they called on Captain to urgently establish a standalone, permanent anti corruption entity to deal with corruption. As, as they put it in their resolution. Now, if that happens, a lot of the work and a lot of the report that uh, Shamila Batoy presented yesterday will not fall within the NPA's purview anymore. This new permanent entity that the ANC is calling for is going to have to be established urgently and it is going to take over all of the work in relation to corruption, or I imagine by the time it's been through the parliamentary process, through corruption, the expensive form of corruption, which the, uh, the, the, the parliamentary process will define as a, there'll be a cutoff point of 1 million rand, 5 million rand, 10 million rand. That's a political decision. But that whole uh, resolution, implementation of that resolution is simply ignored in the reporting of the National Prosecuting Authority, both as regards uh, anti-corruption strategies and as regards uh, the, uh, the effect of budget cuts, because obviously a lot of the budget of the NPA will have to be spent on its anti-corruption efforts, and if, as the, the NEC of the ANC has now determined, that work is going to be given to a specialised and properly trained independent unit that gets its resourcing separately from the NPA and uh, is able to enjoy permanence, which is something that the Scorpions didn't have, well, it's going to be a different ball game to the ball game that was being talked about in Parliament yesterday. It's almost as if uh, Shamila Batoy is in denial or perhaps is a rabbit in the headlights when it comes to accepting that reform of the system is going to involve the, uh, the, the reprioritization of serious corruption to put it into the hands of this permanent unit that the NEC has resolved Cabinet must uh, establish. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, this is this is a um, a difficult time for Batoy. It certainly is. But uh, I, I want to bring you into the conversation, um, Lawson. 
the NPA ha has been hollowed out. And, and we heard Batohi yesterday telling Parliament that she found it under-resourced, as we've been hearing about these budget cuts and saying that they cannot possibly cut it further because then they just possibly, they cannot do their job. But they're under-resourced whether it comes to funding, skills, capacity. I mean, how much of a factor has that been in curbing the NPA's ability to actually investigate and prosecute? Um, well, thanks, Leanne. Uh, look, that's been a huge factor, and I think, you know, it goes back to the hollowing out of the prosecuting authority uh, in previous years, where uh, there were huge, uh, 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 you know, st staff, uh, huge numbers of staff leaving as a result of a toxic working environment at the prosecuting authority. When Advocate Pontoy took over in uh, February of last year, there was a vacancy rate of, of between 25 and 30 percent across the prosecuting authority. Now, with the injection of funds that came earlier this year from the Minister of Finance, uh, they were able to begin to uh, fill some of those vacancies and, and start again the Aspirant uh, Prosecutors Program, for example, uh, which is, you know, the, uh, uh, the mechanism by which you train young lawyers to become uh, uh, prosecutors within the system. And I think what Advocate Toy was saying yesterday is that if there is going to be a curbing of, uh, of expenditure by the NPA, in the medium term horizon and she was speaking over the next three years then it hampers their ability to recruit new staff because they cannot guarantee that they're going to be able to keep that staff and and critical to uh, combating corruption as well as tackling all other crime uh, you know whether it be gender-based violence or, or a range of other other crimes the npa needs that capacity to be able to do its job and it's not just a question of the minister of finance saying well, because we're cutting everywhere else in government, uh, you must take a, a similar uh, haircut, as it were. Uh, you know, the Minister of Finance needs to look at the issue of the return on investment. And this is the thing. I mean, I'm busy reading in terms of um, uh, 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 Let's see, Lawson, I think we just lost you. Need a special uh, dispensation. Sorry, Lisa. Leanne, I was saying that institutions like the NPA and the uh, other law enforcement agencies need a, a, a special dispensation for the Minister of Finance because the work that they do will, uh, through asset recovery and other mechanisms, bring in money back, money back into the fiscus and also instill greater levels of confidence by South Africans and the broader investor community uh, in, in our ability to sustain the rule of law. You know, Lawson, you spoke, we've spoken about staff and the risks and the budget cuts. And I mean, we're already seeing that there's a 330 million staff deficit. They're saying that this is going to increase to 401 million in the next financial year. And I mean, this is just looking at the NPA. They've managed to fill jobs, uh, 539 of the 900 advertised. But this is going to, of course, hamper any training for the aspirant prosecutor program. Um, you, you know, there's just there are so many repercussions of cutting this budget. And then there's the problem that if these budgets come in and then money is starting to be sourced from private funders and donors. I mean, Advocate Hoffman, where does that leave us? And I mean, surely that's a big risk if we start looking for private funding and donors as well. It's allocated. And if it is allocated on, on training rather than on specific uh, uh, projects, I don't have a problem with it. The difficulty about using um, foreign or donor money on the aspirant uh, prosecutors program is that aspirant prosecutors are, are young, uh, recent graduates who are no match to the senior counsel who will be employed by any uh, corrupt individuals who are put on trial for their corrupt activities. The capability, the capacity, and the skills are just not there in the, the NPA. And while it is commendable that uh, they, they are now recruiting after all recruiting was stopped in 2015, the, the, the difficulty about bringing up young prosecutors in the system is that they have to start at the bottom and earn their spurs. They cannot possibly be put in to fight the uh, criminal law specialist advocate who is retained to defend a corrupt person. And as we know, corrupt uh, activities take place in secret, like complex transactions that are designed to be hidden. 
There are huge mountains of paper that need to be analyzed using artificial intelligence that uh, the NPA just doesn't have because there's no budget for it. And the, the, the task of securing a conviction in a corruption case is just as onerous as in any other criminal case. You have to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. And the NEC of the ANC has recognized this and has uh, decided that corruption work is not actually uh, being done efficiently in the system as it stands. At the moment, the investigation of corruption is done by the Hawks, and nobody is suggesting that the Hawks are up to that task when it comes to grand corruption. The prosecution side of it is done by the, the NPA, and the NPA has been hollowed out, as, as Lawson uh, has correctly pointed out. So we, we have a situation in which the sort of people who are up to the task at hand in countering corruption are not in the NPA, are not going to be in the NPA for many years, and are not recruitable by the NPA because of the bad experience that is remembered by those who were scorpions and are no longer scorpions. So the idea of starting a new unit that specializes in the serious corruption and uh, white collar crime um, uh, sector is a good one. And it is one that, that, that is simply not dealt with in this report. One would think that if um, uh, Advocate Batoy wants to get the NPA back onto a good footing, that she would welcome the decision of the, N of the, um, the ANC to, to take the corruption work off her desk and give it to a, a specialized unit that uh, operates independently and is, uh, is resourced and secure in its tenure so that it is able to get on with the, the task of sorting out grand corruption. Because if that task is not done soon, South Africa is going to go bankrupt. We are going to have to go to the IMF for a loan, and that kind of loan does not come without strings attached. It, it, it comes with the uh, conditionalities that the IMF uh, uh, will require. We have a situation at the moment where the, uh, the, uh, the government has no confidence in the Criminal Justice Administration the, the uh, PPE COVID-related uh, procurements that were crooked have been given to the, to the Special Investigating Unit to investigate. It has no uh, uh, criminal law capacity at all. The, the, the Hawks, huge vote of no confidence in the Hawks by, by creating the Investigating Directorate within the NPA, thereby in a possibly illegal way, um, bringing investigative capacity back into the NPA when it hasn't had any uh, since the Scorpions were disbanded, and in, in a situation in which the legal framework suggests that the investigation of corruption is done by the Hawks and the prosecution by the NPA. So sorting out the mess is really a question of implementing the uh, resolution that was made by the NPA. Oh, but, sorry, by, by the ANC. By the ANC. Let, Lawson, let me bring you into the conversation. So, obviously, I mean, that, that would be a solution. Uh, what Advocate's been saying is bringing in an independent investigative unit that is, you know, basically away from all political interference. I mean, that's, that's what's been spoken to. We've been talking about that a lot. But let's, let's have a look of late. The the arrests that have been taking place, the, 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 the developments that we have seen, because there have been a number of arrests, um, we are seeing things happening, and we, ha we heard yesterday Advocate Batoyhi, I mean, she was basically just saying that this is just a tiny, tiny pinpoint on a massive iceberg and that there is much more to follow. So she really is trying to um, get the confidence up, and it seemed that she did yesterday, but what did you feel? I mean, do you you think that 
that they are in the right direction. I asked you this in the beginning, but the arrests that they're making, the progress that they're doing, are you, are you happy with all that's happening now? Uh, thanks, Leanne. I first need to respond to uh, Advocate Hoffman's last comment. I'm really surprised that he is suggesting that the National Director of Public Prosecutions should take her orders from the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. Uh, you know, it would be absolutely wrong, and I would be the first one to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, to to, uh, to shout at her if she were to take her instructions from her political party. Yes, I support the idea of an independent anti-corruption agency, but that must come through a proper policy process from government, not from the diktat of the African National Congress. So I'm really surprised that Advocate Hoffman is suggesting that. Uh, to your question, Leanne, I really, I, I do think that progress is being made. It's been long and slow and hard work. And Advocate Butoy has told us this over the last 18 months, that it's going to take a lot, a lot of work. They don't have the resources. They've been able to bring in some of that capacity, which is now we're beginning to see the fruits of that in the, in the arrests that we've seen in, in recent days and weeks. And when she said yesterday that this is, you know, uh, a tiny pinprick on a massive iceberg, you know, I think we can expect that there are going to be many more uh, uh, other arrests to, to flow from the investigations that have been done, both by the uh, investigating directorate within the NPA, as well as this new fusion center that President Ramaphosa initiated a few weeks ago, which is really a, uh, a renewal of the anti-corruption task team, bringing together various different law enforcement agencies to work together and to deal in particular also with the recent COVID-19 corruption. So I think the NPA is on the right trajectory here. And what she was warning yesterday was that if we uh, cut the funding to the NPA, they're not going to be able to continue to do the, uh, this very important anti-corruption work. But we must also remember that the NPA is a much bigger and broader t uh, target, which is to uh, prosecute all crimes committed in South Africa. And I don't think we should uh, simply focus on the issue of corruption. There are a whole range of other issues that are important for ordinary South Africans in terms of our safety and security, on which we rely on the police and the prosecuting authority. Yeah. Gentlemen, I've got literally a minute, but I need to touch on the whole Gupta um, issue because that is something that was brought up yesterday. And we did hear that was a question that was asked towards uh, Shamila Batoyi, talking to the fact that they are not getting too much cooperation with the United Arab Emirates and law enforcement there. There was a question asked, are we ever going to see justice there? And she said, yes, we will. Obviously still trying to create the, the idea that we must have confidence that justice will be brought to book. How confident are you? Um, if, I, if I may ask you to keep this very, very short advocate, and perhaps you can wrap it up for us, Lawson. Yes, look, um, I, I do believe that it is possible with the right amount of political will to get cooperation out of the UAE. But I'm disappointed that um, that Lawson has misunderstood. I do, I do not suggest that the NPA should take instructions from the ANC. What I am suggesting is that if it is now in prospect that all corruption work is going to be taken away from the NPA, the NPA ought to be making a constructive contribution to the debate on how the legislation should be changed, where the line should be drawn, where grand corruption should begin and end, which part of the work should be given to the, the uh, specialized entity that the, the ANC has in mind. After all, the cabinet, with the exception of uh, Patricia DeLille, is a, uh, uh, a deployees of a, a, a unit that is all ANC deployees. So it's unrealistic to uh, s simply ignore what is coming down the line and to cry about uh, budget cuts when the budget cuts won't affect you if you're no longer an anti-corruption body, which is what the, AN what, what the NPA is meant to be at the moment, but isn't. Yeah. All right. Um, Lawson, a final word from you. Would you like to add something? Yeah, look, uh, uh, on, uh, you know, on the Guptas and the international cooperation, you know, uh, Leanne, these matters move very slowly. And it is concerning to hear that we're not getting the levels of cooperation from the UAE that we would uh, probably, uh, you know, that we certainly need. But it's important to note that, you know, uh, the request for mutual legal assistance has not only been made to the UAE, but to a number of other countries across the globe. And we've seen the U.S., for example, take action against the Guptas and their associated companies. 
So I think what Advocate Cornier was saying was that we will be able to get some of that information, and that's what she was referring to. So it's not all negative. Uh, the UAE may not be cooperating, but, uh, but other, other countries perhaps are. All right. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us here on the program. Uh, Lawson Naidu, the Executive Secretary of CASAC, and Advocate Paul Hoffman, uh, the Director at Accountability Now, discussing the performance of the NPA following the current activities in the country, as well as uh, presenting its annual report in Parliament yesterday. We'll see you after the break.